All right, what is up? What is up? What's good in the hood? Today's show is titled, What's Good for the Goose Isn't Always Good for the Gander, and vice versa. <laughs> uh, this will be an interesting one. I don't think I've covered this specifically before. Uh, before I get started, a little bit of housekeeping. I always like to ask you guys if you're watching this elsewhere on the interwebs, to be solid and head on over to YouTube and join me over here and hit the like button just for the algorithms. Helps me out a ton. Boom. Okay, I have uh, a bunch of really good talking points for tonight's show. And uh, before I do that, I have a, um, well, I got a sponsored uh, request from a guy who doesn't really have, it's not structured in such a way that I can read it and then just post the video with my feedback. It's more of a timeline. It's not that long. It won't take me too long to go through it. It's more of a timeline on his divorce. And he more or less wanted to share what his experience was just so guys understand uh, what family law is and what you can march into. So let me uh, I'll throw it up on the screen for you too so you can follow along. Follow the bouncing dot. That's going to really date myself calling the bouncing dot. All right, there we go. All right, um, here I'll go bigger screen for you. Anyway, he just says, uh, this is a story from the past year. It involves cheating, wiretapping, multiple state court cases, GPSing, police involvement, and parental alienation. All right, so it just it's about uh, one year and change, but um, it'll give you a little bit of frame of what, what can happen to some guys. This isn't a benchmark for all guys, but just understand this happens. It is more, <laughs> it's more common than you think. Let's, let's just put it that way. December 26, uh, 2016, my wife of 16 years had an affair and was convicted, and, sorry, with a convicted felon in my bedroom with children under the age of five in the bedroom. So <laughs> dude's married to a chick for 16 years. She has an affair with a convicted felon with children under the age of five in the bedroom while they're going to pound town. Okay. So, uh, fast forward a few years to December 2019, after enough trying and lies, I asked my wife to visit her parents in, uh, I'm guessing that's New Hampshire from Texas, where we're living, to hopefully gain some perspective and maybe try again. I don't know. You know what? Guys are a glutton for punishment. They always want to try again. Wife of 16 years is porking a convicted felon in your bed with your children in the, the room. But that's, you know, that's what men like to do, complicate their lives and justify why they do it, right? How many times have I said that? Uh, February 2020, she files for divorce in Texas. February 2020, she files for protective order in Texas, false accusations of abuse. She files a protective order in New Hampshire for false accu accusations of abuse. She files, I don't know what a CPS report is in Texas, and I'm investigated, drug tested, and deemed innocent. I, I'm guessing that's child protective services. She files another report in New Hampshire where I'm investigated, drug tested, and deemed innocent. She files a child support case in Texas. Uh, this is all in the course of like four months here. So she's basically doing every, she's throwing everything she can at this guy. She cheats on him with a felon, with his children in the bedroom, and she's going jumping through all these hoops to make his life miserable. I procure an attorney in New Hampshire to fight the DV restraining order. That's domestic violence. Uh, we asked for continuance to prep, denied. New Hampshire protective order hearing, one times one telephone hearing, New Hampshire rules, no access to children. So he loses access to his kids in April of 2020, orders me to forfeit my pets, and my pr protective order is granted. May of that year, so a month later, I pay five grand down and get an appellate attorney notice of appeal filed in New Hampshire. Okay, you're speaking American legal terms that I'm not familiar with, but January, sir, June 2020, requests a Father's Day call with children. The dude doesn't even get to talk to his kids on Father's Day. July 2020, Supreme Court brief filed in New Hampshire is 40 grand for that. He pays five grand here at this time, so he's at 45 grand here. Evidence of extensive wiretapping discovered of all my attorney's privileged calls over eight months. Apparently, that's how they knew what to say in New Hampshire. <laughs> Who's who's wiretapping this guy's wife? Wow. 
Judge orders me to pay $5,700 a month in child support, terminating my ability to afford term, uh, attorneys. My diverse, and I cover this in my book on why smart men don't get married. <laughs> I break down the math of, of, of the, the scam that is child support. Um, November 2020, my diverse attorney calls, sorry, quits because I can't afford her. Evidence of GPS location and listening device found in my car. Wow, this chick's going through everything, eh? Without any, well, you know, she's porking convicted felon, so maybe she was, you know, getting down with a guy that was into this stuff. Evidence of GPS. Uh, without an attorney, ex's attorneys destroy my ability to fight for my kids, and she's granted the house, the car, all my belongings, three thousand dollars a month in support, on top of fifty-seven hundred dollars a month in uh, child support. So he's paying her, I guess, alimony, and I'm barred all access to the kids with no access to his kids. See, this is the thing that drives me absolutely bonkers about freaking family law and, and and marriage. They're all like, yeah, just go get married. Just go do it. At, you know, what could possibly go wrong? You know, go and go and pass on your seed, blah, blah, blah. And then 16 years into a marriage, a dude's wife could be banging a convicted felon in your bed with your children in the bedroom. And then she goes through all of these hoops to manipulate the legal system to alienate him from his children so he can't see them. He's paying $5,700 a month in child support, plus $3,000 a month, I'm assuming, in uh, alimony, maintenance, support, whatever that's called in that state. And uh, this is this is only uh, November of that year. So four years after he found out his wife was uh, up to shenanigans, he's going through all this nonsense. Well, an attorney, she uses my suicide note to procure an arrest warrant in New Hampshire against me. <sighs> You know, a lot of guys will consider taking a permanent uh, step to a temporary problem in their lives. And you got just be careful with that, guys. I mean, you know, talk to friends and family. Just fucking call into my show. Do what you got to do. But don't don't go doing something like that over uh, over what family law does. It'll pass. I promise you. As shit as it might seem, if you're in it right now or if you're or if you know a guy that's going through divorce, honestly, dudes. Just reach out to him. Send him a text. You know, if you see him, just say, hey, man, how's things going? Just wanted to check in on you, right? Because that's what men do. Anyway, she hires a private investigator to locate him. She files to renew New Hampshire's restraining order and is granted without due process. She procures a police to contact my work to locate me. Anyway, it cuts off after that. Um, he basically stops, but you get the idea. It is, anyway, I figured uh, that'll be a opening segue <laughs> to tonight's show. It doesn't really have anything to do with the topic, but I wanted to get that out of the way because the guy had an interesting timeline there. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, what's going on? I see Conk in the chat, Chris, Moff, the Moffster. I like Moff, man. We had a we had a couple of good chats on stereo. Um, let's see here. We got a couple of super chats. What do we got here? You're not a man until you've had a man. Um, okay, whatever, dude, or chick. Uh, Sean K. New member. Let's close that. Guys, if you're going to send super chats, try to have them make sense, right? Like, just don't super chat something and say something like, I like Christmas time. You know, give me something to work with, please. All right. Um, let me go open up my description here. All right. So there are subtle but obvious differences between men and women. So let's begin. Classes in session. Pay attention. Here we go. And I will be taking calls to, uh, tonight, guys, after I go through these points. Uh, give me about 20, 30 minutes or so. Uh, and by the way, if you're getting ready and worked up to call in, don't be a value leech. Okay. Call like come in with something that we can have a decent conversation about that's gonna provide value to the viewers. I don't want you guys coming in there sulking and complaining. And certainly don't interrupt me and try to speak over me when I'm delivering a point. This is my show, that's how it rolls here, okay? It's, aside from that, it's open. Young, old, men, women. I had a guy, and I've had a few guys that are like, I have a better solution to a problem that you've addressed in a prior video. Okay, good. Uh, the show's live, I always drop the join link. You can come in there, and if you have a better solution, then let's, let's hear what you got. Definitely open to that too. I'm always uh, down for an interesting conversation that uh, goes somewhere. Anyway, so men and women are not the same. In case you haven't noticed, you know, we're quite different physically. 
Men have far more upper body strength. Uh, women don't. Uh, you stand naked in front of a mirror with your girlfriend, and you will notice vast differences between the build of men and women. So those are just the physical differences. But the thing that I find interesting since I've been doing this is I see a lot of um, guys that are mostly plugged in, they're blue pilled, and a lot of women that like to you know come into this space and be like, hey, what's going on over there? What's that guy Rich talking about? Let me check it out. And this is that show and who's he talking to? And what's that all going on? Only oh, click on this video and see what's going on, and then they go and creep you right. So they like to take something that works for guys. Like we'll tell guys spin plates, right? If 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 marriage is your goal, because this is what a lot of guys will ask me, you know, well, what's the best way to find a good, um, you know, woman for wife stock? Date, date around, date around non-monogamously with a bunch of women and find out what crap looks like and what great looks like. So at least if you're going to invest in mother stock for children, you at least make an educated guess. So yeah, you're going to have to dig through a, lot of, a little bit of dirt, sometimes a lot of dirt before you're going to find anything that might resemble gold. The same isn't true for women. You know, they can't be promiscuous with impunity, right? There's there's big differences. And I'm going to go through all these right now. So let's go through the evolved firmware uh, as we dive into this. So let's talk about jealousy first. Men and women get jealous for completely different reasons. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, uh, you can just expand the description because that's where I always put my talking po po points, bleh, points for each show. You get the idea. So men and women get jealous for completely different reasons. I know I've probably covered this before, but there's a lot of new eyeballs that come into this stuff and it's worth rehashing again. But women get jealous because they're afraid to lose provisioning resources and attention. They're not so interested, if we're being honest, in where he's parking his penis, okay? Do they care? Yeah, of course. Would they rather have exclusive, exclusive access to it? Yes. That's what they want. You know, they want it all. But at the end of the day, throughout history and as a function of evolution, and I'm going to I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis on this for a reason, guys. Don't just sit around watching, you know, what's new and cool out there in the Mano Swamp and think that you're going to get the best information. There's a lot of young guys out there, you know, that have come into this space and you'll see them pop out entertainment videos with some information infused into it. I'll be honest, man. If I want to ask somebody an opinion on something, I lean towards somebody that's been through parts of life that I haven't seen yet, right? Or at least have been to the, you know through the parts of life that I've also seen, not somebody younger than me. But there's a lot of this, I don't know, I just want to call it red pill masturbation because that's really what it is. A lot of guys just, you know, running just to get attention and they're looking for money and that's the wrong way to go about it, man. So some of the information out there ain't the greatest, but I always like to come back to Evo Psych. One of the best books, I think all of you guys should honestly read and I always have this pinned in the top comment of all my videos. Um, it's called The Evolution of Desire and the author's name is David Buss, I believe. And um, it's exactly as the title states, you're going to get what you expect out of that book. It's going to go through how human beings have evolved to where they are today over millions of years and how we survived, how we got to the point that we are today. Okay. Because a lot of people forget we've been on this planet for millions of years, you know, as uh, upright primates that have eventually evolved into sapiens, which is what we are today. So you have to look at human past. And in the past, women did not get jealous if you went and ha had sex with the neighbor in the other tent. What they were concerned about is, am I going to have provisioning, safety, protection from this guy? Is he going to feed us in the village? You know, are our children that we've made going to be taken care of? That's what they were concerned with. That's it. Men get jealous for different reasons, though. Men as a function of evolution, especially in the last 10,000 years, I think this is highly emphasized because, you know, you start introducing things like religion, marriage, um, you know, and the way that culture has just exploded. And especially, you know, with transportation, we've seen a lot of cross pollinations, you know, between different parts of the world. You know, you go back 10,000 years ago, it wasn't easy to travel. I mean, I can hop on a flight when we're not in quarantine and I can be over in Europe in eight hours, right? You get the point though. But men get jealous because they don't have assurance of paternity. 
Okay. They want to know that the baby in her belly that comes out of her is his. He doesn't want to be taking care of some other dude's kid. So that's why they're concerned with what she's doing with her lady parts. Simple as that. She talks to another guy, a guy hits on her, you know, a pickup artist, you know, approaches her, a uh, dude at work asks her out for a coffee. You don't really care as a guy. I mean, it's not a big freaking deal. If she's hot, she's going to get hit on. I mean, if you've got an attractive girlfriend, she's going to get hit on. It's just a fact of life, right? Guys don't typically get jealous over stuff like that. What they're concerned about is if he's, you know, if she's going to pound town with a convict in his matrimonial bed and his under five-year-old children in the room at the same time. That's what he's concerned about. He wants to make sure that the kids are his, right? Women have 100% assurance of paternity because they carry the child, they birth it, they know it's theirs. There's no question in their mind. Men, however, have questions. So men and women get jealous for completely different reasons. Again, men get jealous because of paternity, because there's confusion, and fantasize is another problem in primates. It's, it's actually quite popular. And if you don't know what uh, infanticide is, it's basically where the dominant alpha male that uh, enters that tribe basically kills off the offspring of the uh, past dominant alpha male because they don't want those uh, children getting in the way of his legacy. They also take up resources. And the other thing it does is it uh, pushes the uh, mama primates into estrus, right? So they're so they're ready to get pregnant again. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. You get the point. Men and women get jealous for totally different reasons. People tell men do what's right, but they'll tell women do what's right for you. Okay. And you know this is true. This is absolutely 100 percent true. You've heard this play out time and time again. You, you know, you see the girls in a conversation, they're like, you just do what's right for you, girl. You go, girl. You know, you go and do that thing, right? They'll always tell guys, do what's right. Just do what's right. There's no for you at the end of it, right? Big, big difference. Pay attention to that. Men and women cheat. Okay, we got that one. Women athletes. Oh, this is another good one that I saw pop up a few times too. This is a good one. Female athletes. I think I think the example that they use was Women's Basketball Association. What is there? NBA, National Basketball? I don't know. I don't watch sports. I can't sit around and watch other guys chase excellence. It's just not me. Anyway. She was complaining that female basketball players get paid a heck of a lot less than male basketball players in the NBA. All right. <laughs> See, these, these narratives that you hear are seeking equality of outcome in all cases. And there's certain scenarios where performance has to play a role, right? And if you've got an elite top shelf male basketball player uh, that brings in, I don't know, 10, tens of millions, hundreds, hundreds of millions of eyeballs per show that sponsors can put their stuff in front of. They can sponsor, you know, their jersey. The, uh, the athlete will, uh, you know, speak to the validity of the uh, sponsorship and the, the greatness of the sportswear or whatever the hell it is that he's promoting. Nowadays, it seems to be all liquor brands, right? But you get the idea, right? Women athletes just don't bring the same same number of eyeballs to the sport as male athletes do. It's it's just a fact of life. So how can you pay women the exact same as you'd pay that male athlete? It just doesn't work that way. Right? And you have to understand that these that these differences exist. The problem is is that when, you know, you have these plugged in white knight beta males or these uh, women that are pushing the agenda of equality in all areas and egalitarianism and blah, 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 blah. And let's make everybody the same. And men and women can, are exactly the same. If a man can do it, a woman can do it. Well, men can't have babies. You don't see me crying about that. I know that for a fact, right? Anyway, so you, so we talked about the points in uh, sports. Uh, let's talk about the uh, promiscuity issue because that's, uh, that's another one. Let me just grab these supers to make sure I don't let these things fall behind. Mexican, Mexican Iron Man, Mexican Iron Man. Did you drive an R R eight? Recently moved my business purpose and life. F R comma. Oh, California. <laughs> I guess he means California. To South Carolina. Already spinning two plates. Thirty to thirty two. Having a great year in business and paying less taxes. To guys in stream. I'm fifty one and everything Rich teaches works. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome. And guys, if you want the playbook. 
boom, it's right there. Get it off Amazon, Kindle, print, and I did the uh, Audible narration myself. That's where you'll get the deep dive into all the useful information. But you better be ready to do the work. You better be ready to show up and do the damn work because some of you guys are just not ready for that. Maybe you're not ready for the truth too. Let's go back to promiscuity. All right. Women today actually believe that they can be promiscuous with impunity. Now, part of that is because we've got hormonal birth control, which we didn't have for millions of years. It's only, what was it, the 60s or so, the late 60s, the early 70s, that that was available to the masses. I know I know the masses had, like most Western countries, had available access, like easy access to birth control by the late 70s. Okay. So... That comes around, and then women can just have sex with whoever they want and not get, and not get pregnant. It's, you know, there's 99%, um, you know, success rate with most contraceptives, whether it's hormonal birth control pills, IUDs. I mean, they got to take the pills, obviously, IUDs, condoms, blah, blah, blah. You get it. But now women can all of a sudden be promiscuous with impunity, or, they, or so they think. But there's a big difference. They can do whatever they want, okay? The masses can do whatever they want. They want to have you know, a hundred thousand notch counts is, doesn't matter. doesn't matter to me. I could care less, but here's where it does matter. When guys go around looking for wife stock because they want to have kids and they're dating and they see that there's a bunch of women that they're talking to that are for the most part have been complete and total garden tools. They've been very liberal with their time and who they spend time with. It's just a fact of life. That's just the way that it is today. But the problem is, is that the data reveals that women that have had more partners are incredibly bad for long-term marriages. Uh, they have a difficult time forming, forming a healthy pair bond to the children's father, to the man. Uh, and because they've moved around so much, hopping off, you know, one eggplant to the other, um, it, it's, it's very easy for them to move on. It's just a fact of life. And believe it or not, the numbers get bad after three partners. It's not like it's like, you know, it's got to be 30 or 300. But after three partners, I mean, I think the data stopped getting collected after about 11 partners, 10 or 11 partners. But after that point, the, the uh, chances of divorce go up dramatically. Huge. One or two, I think it's about 30%. Once you get past three, it just, it just reaches, you know, the pinnacle mark. So, you know... I always tell guys, look, if, you know, one of the things that you got to look at if you're vetting for wife stock is what's her notch count look like? Because I'm assuming you want to raise children under the same household, not have to deal with divorce, not have her go crazy, or at least low, lower the chances of her going crazy. Plus it brings a bunch of other problems too, right? Um, you know, women that have had a ton of partners are more often than not single moms. They've, uh, they've got multiple children, sometimes from different fathers. They've had abortions. I'm not just saying one, you know, some is multiple. Um, there's just a number of, of problems that pop up and those things don't pop up with men. You know, men can't have abortions. You know, men can't actually form a healthy pair bond to a woman. It doesn't matter if his notch count is 10 or 30 or 50. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's, there's no consequences to men being promiscuous. And then, you know, you always get the argument, like you're telling guys to run around and do whatever they want. That's going to just ruin all women. Women have already ruined themselves. You know, society is at the point it's at, it's well past the tipping point. Okay. Women have already chosen this past long before I ever uploaded my first video in 2014. Okay. This has been going on for decades before I showed up, before I even started writing the first word in my book. This has been going on for a long time. So this is not my fault. This is not the fault of any of the men that I collaborate with. This is society. You can thank toxic feminism for that one. All right. Men and women are the same. No, they're not. There's big differences and there's consequences to choices. Choices have consequences, right? Ladies, if you're young and you're watching the show, think about that. Because smart guys that pay attention will not or are very unlikely to wife up a promiscuous woman if they got their head screwed on, right? If they don't, hey, I don't care. You know, you're plugged into lies. That's your choice. Men are the disposable sex while women are the protected sex. Nothing new there, right? Men have always been disposable. 
you know, warring tribes conflict. The winners take all the men that are of fighting age, adult males, teenage men, even teenage boys, you know, tweens. They take them all and either enslave them or try to incorporate them into their military. And if neither one of those worked out, third option was kill them. While women were preserved. Why childbearing? Okay. Men have always been disposable while women have always been protected. Men and women are not the same. They're handled differently. And that's okay. Just get your head wrapped around it so you don't get surprised by any crazy stuff later on in life. Uh, women can put off having babies for a career the way men can. That's a big lie, isn't it? They can't. Well, they can try. You know what one of my favorite radio ads is right now? And I don't know who the marketer is that did this, but it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's on the radio and it's like, Hey, la- Hey girls, you know, Hey ladies, you've been putting off having babies for a while. And you know, you got your degree, you got your uh, career, you got promoted. You're the partner at the law firm, blah, blah, blah. Sign up now for IVF for only $10,000. We'll get you knocked up. No problem at all. They include certain number of treatments or some disclaimers. And then somewhere, you know, about three quarters of the way through the ad, there's a little baby like laughing, like, <laughs> like that, like, <laughs> you're getting taken for 10 grand lady. Cause you could have done this before and had a healthy baby. You know, the chances of, 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 uh, complex pregnancies go up dramatically after about the age of 25 to 30. Um, you know, women will start looking at these numbers, the ones that are aware anyway, we'll we'll start looking at the numbers and they'll start to realize, you know, the chances of, um, you know, bearing a child that has uh, developmental issues is on the spectrum is going to require special needs goes up. I think it's a percent or two every year after the age of 30. So, you know, these 41 year old, these 42 year old women that are going out and getting IVF. Hey, I know it works. I've seen, I've seen babies come out of that. But, uh, you know, men can, men can go and chase excellence all their lives and have children at 42. Healthy children, in fact. No problem at all. They can do it at 20. They can do it at 42. Heck, I talked to a guy last week that was 55 when he had uh, twins. Um, no IVF needed. He just wifed up a woman that was 20 years younger than him, right? So that's just the way that it is. Um, I'm not going to spend any time on the handling of mothers and fathers and family law because I've already gone a little bit longer than I wanted to. Let me grab the invite link here and let you guys start queuing up for questions. So again, if you have um, you got a question on tonight's topic, awesome. Um, something you want to ask me about because you think you have a better solution to the problem, join me live and ask a Q. I'll let a Q because you guys want um just copy and paste that so i can spam it there it is so come in and um try to keep it on topic but um if there's something that you think you have a solution to uh something that i've talked about and it's a better solution than what i've talked about let's hear it i had a guy that messaged me you know the other week he's like i want to debate you i'm i'm 23 and i'm smart and i want to debate you all right come on my show For the train wreck, it's always on Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on the show. Bring your your questions. But do not be a value leech, guys. You know what I'm talking about when I say value leech. Don't show up and start crying, not listening and sulking, especially if you got more chins than a Chinese phone book. Don't pull that shit on me. Honestly, there should be like a minimum requirement. Before you can, you know, watch any of this stuff, read a book on any of this stuff, can you at least do 25 push-ups straight? Start there. <laughs> Miranda says, Richard, why not just get prenups? Why are you so against marriage? Can't you just get a fair prenup? There's all kinds of problems that come with prenups, which I cover in great detail in my book on the marriage chapter. You should grab it, Miranda. It will help you as a woman understand the plight of men. But essentially, uh, there's a lot of flaws with pre- prenups. They can be effective, but over, but as more time passes and as circumstances change, um, they're not usually worth the paper they're written on 10, 15 years down the road, especially if there's been big change in circumstances and who's working, who's staying home, and all, everything that ties into that. And unfortunately, everything in family law is hostile towards fathers. It is not friendly towards fathers. It's friendly towards mothers and hostile towards fathers. And it also encourages women to behave very badly during divorce. 
Those are all facts. You want to learn more about that? Read the chapter in my book on that. Uh, Digi Nomad, you got jacked rich and kept that flame. Love it. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Amadeus, Amadeus. That was a very cool song back when I was a kid. There is a girl I know who's been a CC rider. I'm guessing that's carousel rider in her 20, in her 20s. Anyways, on a, on a pill, a few abortions, now trying to get pregnant for almost a year without any luck. Uh, that's why your past catches up with you. Yeah. There, there are consequences to choices. There are big consequences to choices, some greater than others. Um, all right, let's, let me grab my headphones so I can start pulling you guys in again. The links in the live chat. If you guys are watching live, got a question, something you want to challenge me on. Cause you think you got a better solution. Let's hear it. All right. Uh, Tim, I'm going to grab you first. Okay. And when you come in the waiting area, the green room, there's a, a private chat. Just let me know what it, what it is that you want to talk about. It just helps me, uh, pick through these a little quicker. Tim, what's up, brother? Hey, Rich, how you doing? So first of all, I've been following your stuff now for about a month, read your book, awesome, awesome content. So um, oh, just have a really appreciate. simple question in regards to uh, like standards. And, um, you know, I, I'm a successful guy. I have a couple of small businesses myself. I've been trying to spin plates since my uh, ex of about a year and a half up to me. And, um, you know, a lot of catch up, a lot of like red pill, you know, catch up for me to do with that long term relationship. So but I'm finding that, you know, the girls that I'm meeting that I'm spinning plates with, I'm just not really into them as much as my ex-girlfriend. So I don't know if I'm still hung up on her or my standards too high. Um, is Am I just not looking in the right place? How old are you again? I'm 28. And how long ago did you break up with the sex of yours? Uh, we broke about three months ago. And how long did you date her for? About a year and a half. Yeah, she'll be on your mind for a bit longer. I mean, that's totally normal. Okay. But like, why did you guys break up? Uh, she ended up wanting to pursue a, starting a business too. So she moved out of state and wanted to partner up with her brother to start a business. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. she wanted to basically behave like a man and chase excellence. Yes. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, Hey, that's, that's the narrative that toxic feminism sells to women today, right? Is, you know, forget about making babies when your biological clock is telling you to it, you know, in your twenties, go out and chase a career. So whatever. Okay. So she's gone now, but you're just not that interested or that keen on, on some of the women that you're seeing now. Yeah. So should I be, I mean, should I kind of be forcing myself to spin plates and, and meet new chicks or yeah, of course. I'm just working on myself and I'm, I'm, you know, developing my businesses, put a lot of more time into growing those. Um, but I'm just, I don't know if it's just a, my standards are too high or if I'm just kind of in the funk from the, relationship well I'm not sure well exactly. what's the problem with the women that you're coming across why are you not that interested in them? they're just not super engaging i mean they're they're overly interested so i, I tend to lose attraction for them fairly quickly and they're probably like seven or eight. It's like i'm having a hard time breaking into the the higher nine and ten categories and finding interest where are you meeting them women. um either at the gym out and about um and doing a little bit of day game uh meeting chicks at like yoga and mm -hmm. um also online dating where do you live in what state I'm in California, San Diego, California. There should be some pretty hot. I mean, there's some pretty hot chicks in you know warmer climate still. I mean, you're going to get a lot of left left leaners, but um, you should act. I mean, you should have good good access to. I mean, I'll call it inventory, but you yeah. get my point, right? So yeah, where are the nines and tens hanging at? Like, why are you not running into them at the gym or the yoga classes and stuff like that? That's a good question. I think probably part of it comes to me being more, more comfortable approaching like the seven and eights. So, um, oh, okay. So you're just not getting a good close rate on the sevens and eights. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. or I'm not even trying for the, the higher numbers. So. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I mean, you might as well diversify, throw yourself on the dating apps. I mean, you're not going to see a lot of very hot women on. There's a lot of overly entitled bratty women on there. You're going to come across a lot of single moms, but that's fine. Just, you know, at least get yourself on it yeah. so that you're casting a wider uh, net, but just, but just keep working on your day game. And just, like, you know, as you go about your life and you're chasing excellence and you're at the bank, you're at the store and you see a hottie, just say, you know, just, just make your cold approach and, you know, drop your lines and see if you can swap a number. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, like, don't, don't worry about the ex still, still being on your mind. I mean, she will be for a while. They, you know, there was a, 
there was a guy that once said to me, you know, if you date a woman for like five years, you're probably going to forget her in about five years time. Like it's going to take you just as long as you dated her to get her out of your head. I mean, the days that, that you might have a thought or might try to compare a, a plate today to that are going to be fewer and farther between yeah. further away from the breakup date. But it's totally normal, man. It was three months ago. You probably yeah. dug her vibe. She ended up dumping you, which is always a pain in the ass because ideally you want to be the dumper, not the dumpy, you know? And then she ran off to go yeah, start her business. So, control for sure. yeah, like the best thing that you can do is, uh, you know, continue to double down on yourself, chase excellence, put, you know, put your dent in the universe and, um, you know, just, just be a man on his purpose and don't worry about women that much. Like do your thing. If, if, you know, a hottie shows up in the rotation or several hotties, you know, show up in the rotation, then, you know, you're starting to do the, more of that whatever led up to that but the most important thing is you a lot of guys spend way too much time chasing tail why isn't she responding you know let's take a look at this text text thread you know what does this mean when she does this or she brought that over and she said that after sex or don't worry about that like focus more on yourself because when you're truly on your purpose you're putting your dent in the universe you know you're doing wicked shit you're having fun you got access to great friends you know great opportunities a good social circle doing more stuff that you like you're going to run across more and more beautiful women kind of up that scale right because all the hot women like you know women hang out at the finish line and what do they do they pick the winners there right yeah right so just just be the winner you want to get those tens just be the winner you know that's what it boils down to yeah i think i'm putting way too much emphasis on meeting new chicks and being way too hard on myself about uh, still thinking about the x and definitely should be focusing more on myself and businesses which i am but i'm putting way too much pressure on each interaction I, with the girl i'm trying to close every one and i'm way over focused on it so just beat myself i get the feeling it. that that you're that you're trying to replace your ex-girlfriend with a with a better hotter version of her and that's and yeah. that's really important to you and it really shouldn't be like enjoy your freedom dude like you're 28 do your thing like do you Okay. I appreciate All right. it, Rich. Yeah, you got it, brother. Hey, Sounds do good. me a favor. If you read the book, leave a quick review on Amazon. Just let guys know what value that you got out of it. Yeah, for sure. I loved it. We'll do. Thanks, man. Peace. All right. Let's see what we got here. I will pull in a few more of you guys in a second. Just do me a solid and in the private chat, leave a um, little uh, statement on what it is you want to talk about. If you guys want to join me on the show? I just dropped the link there. Um, Chris says, how should men handle overweight spouses after marriage and kids? Good question. Um, it should start with vetting before the marriage. Like, take a look at her mom. Take a look at her older sisters. Take a look at her aunts and see what they look like. Um, usually, she's going to end up looking like that. So that's that's the starting point. If it's after marriage, like she was thin, fit, she was a fitness model, she had a couple of kids and she just blimped out and didn't care about it, didn't want to do the work after that. Well, it's up to you to set the example, man. I mean, first of all, you better be in, in top shelf condition, you know, if you're going to be, be making demands about her weight. So if she's not going to toe the line by osmosis, like she's not just going to do it because she sees you do it because she wants to keep you around, she wants to keep you placated, she doesn't want you wandering, then you got to basically drop the hammer and say, Hey, look, you know, I signed up for just show her a picture. Just, you know, I, I signed up for this chick and this is who I got today. So we need to fix this. You know, we need to get this thing sorted out because this is what I was expecting to deal with, you know, for, for the life of this marriage. And it's up to you. I mean, you can do a couple of things after that. I've seen guys leave their wives if uh, they were no longer attracted to them. Uh, I've seen guys take on mistresses. I've seen guys cheat. Um, there's any number of things that you can do, but, um, you know, at least communicate that, uh, <laughs> this is, this is what you fell for. Okay. I signed up for this, not this start there. Um, Saeed casual sex with no strings attached has never been easier. Thanks to feminism. Yep. True story. Put yourself amongst the top 20% of men and just pick and choose. Yeah, if you're in the top 20, ideally top 10 to 5% of men out there, and the bar is so low, guys. Like, there's so many, like, I mean, 
two thirds of the North American population is fat. Okay. As a starting point, don't be obese. Start with that. Right. And then you work your way up from there, you know, learn game, make bank, you know, obviously, you know, develop skills from there, competency and all that. But yeah, just put yourself right up there. You can play life on easy. Um, I'm going to get to uh, you guys in the green room in just a second. Let me grab this last super chat. Any channels, books, podcasts you approve of and can recommend us ladies to look into help us better ourselves as girlfriends, future wives and mothers. Um, watch, watch the stuff of the rule zero uh, group, but understand that when we're talking, we're almost always talking to men unless it's others otherwise stated. <clears throat> The same thing applies. You know, I once said to Rolo about his book, <clears throat> he goes, I could have called it the rational female and just done the cover in pink and just given it to women. It's, you know, it's the same thing. It's just, they don't want to hear the information. They don't want to absorb it. Women just want guys to get it. Right. Um, but yeah, if you want to be a fly in the wall, you want to observe, I don't have a channel that I could send you to that's specifically catered to women. Um, I've had conversations about putting one together, but I don't know if there's enough interest and it would be worth my while to be honest with you. I don't even know if you ladies would listen to it. <laughs> I mean, actually listen and apply it. That's, you know, that's the point that I get to, but on these shows, ladies, you know, you can call in here as well too. So if you need a, a question answer, you want to challenge me on something, feel free. Just call in the show. The link works for everybody. It doesn't matter where you're at. All right, let's see what we got here in the back room area. Uh, Ellie red pilled. Who's Ellie red pilled. I have quick points to address. Just wanted to come on whether or not men are. Then we got Alex. Okay, let's pull in Alex. He's got a question about women falling in love. Alex. Alex, can you hear me? No? All right, you're out then. Alex, if you get your mic working or your headphones, whatever the issue was, just let me know in the private chat. Um, Ellie red pilled, Ellie red pilled. Let me grab you in here. Okay. Eli uh, or Ellie? Uh, it's just Eli. That's fine. Eli. Okay. What's, what's uh, shaking, man? Not much, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's actually my first time speaking to you. So yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I was just uh, watching you. I mean, the reason why you just started, because I usually engage with you, but the reason why I just got onto this one. It's because, you know, the email you were reading about this guy and, you know, you've, you've previously done this, you know, the last one was like about this woman who had all these smart things to say. Mm -hmm. But I'm just sort of curious, like are men just destined to sort of end up this way? Because usually I'm pretty sure that a lot of these guys have come across someone pretty similar to you, like right? someone who's like pro, you know, men's right or whatever. Mm -hmm. They've heard these things before. But usually they just think that, okay, yeah, I get that. I get it. There are women like that, but my significant other may be the exception. Usually that's the mentality that men would have until they end up, you know, getting screwed over, in which case they come in, you know, with their tails between their legs and sort of now they want to listen to you when it's a little too late. Right. So, could, I mean, I don't know. Cause, and you also attribute that to like, you know, men being raised by single mothers or whatever. But, we have to also acknowledge that a lot of fathers too raise their sons, you know, with this sort of mentality, you know, this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mentality oh, yeah. There's that, a know, lot of weak fathers out there that are definitely contributing to this problem. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, how do you sort of like try to fix this problem? Because, you know, in many cases, men in particular, they're going to try to search for people like you once they've already been dumped, once they've already, you know, once it's kind of a little too late for them to like, you know, because usually people get into problems or whatever. They're not yeah, going to speak for someone like you. I'm sorry. Here's the thing about the red pill is it's not a vitamin. It's a prescriptive medication to solve an ailment, right? Like people take vitamins. They take vitamin C and zinc and vitamin D to prevent themselves from getting COVID, right? Right. Yeah. You go and take, you know, uh, prescription medicines, painkillers, you know, essentially to deal with the problem that you've created. And that's when they come to this. So, you know, you're to your earlier point, and I think you changed the name of your, um, your screen name because you because you had a, a point to address on whether men are just destined to end up this way. Was that you? Yeah, that that was me actually. It's like serial. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for the most part, yeah, men are destined to complicate their lives and justify why they do it, and that's not going to change for the 
vast majority of the population. Dude, it wouldn't matter if I had a, like 10 million subscribers and a billion views on my channel. That doesn't even put a dent into anything. Right, because I still feel like, you know, even though they're just pretty aware, I mean, there's just like the impulse to like want to get what they want. And it's just like, okay, guys yeah, love I'm, simping, man. Yeah, they like, love okay. bending the knee to women. They've like, always been disposable throughout history. We've always been treated as disposable. It's in our DNA to yeah. basically throw ourselves at the feet of women and society like a little bitch and let society and women do with us, you know, what they please. It's, it's guys like me that say, Hey, you know what? Put yourself first. You know, like Rolo says, you know, make yourself your own mental point of origin. That's what shakes it up a bit. That's what makes it better for guys. That's how they have better experiences in life. Right. But even some men who are already aware of like what's out there, they usually just sort of slowly sort of get themselves in the hole because, you know, OK, I'm just going to do this, but not cross this line because I know what this is all about or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then the next time they get a little closer and closer and closer until the point where they just end up screwed up all over. So I just don't know at this point. Like it's, I, this just could be like the bottleneck for, you know. Yeah. But like, what are you concerned with? Like, why do you care is my question. Like, why do you care that are meant that men are destined to like become this weak version of themselves? Like, why aren't you focused on yourself? I mean, I am focused on myself actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm studying. I mean, I'm a young guy studying college. I mean, I'm like, pretty aware. Like I'm like when I see somebody that's just about to destroy their life and I, Ask him a question like, hey, man, did you, uh, you know, did you think this one through? Did you take a look at a prenup? Right. And they kind of cast it aside and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, I'm fully in love. I'm fully committed to this. This isn't going anywhere. I'm not worried about this. I don't care that she's a hairdresser and I make quarter million dollars a year. It doesn't matter to me. It's like, okay. At least I just opened the door to see if you wanted to take a look at a few things inside that hallway. You don't want to look at it. That's cool, man. You go and fuck up your life. And like on a lot of cases, they're like, they know that, you know, this is the right thing to do, but just don't want to upset their significant other by just sort of mm -hmm. giving the impression that they, their significant other is going to like be a little greedy or whatever. Yeah, so it's that, totally fine. You just have so, to let it go. I mean, you just have to, you know, get yourself to the point where, you know, you realize that you've only got so much energy in a given day to allocate to things that are worth your attention and you sure. only reserve your attention and energy for those things. That's it. You know, I okay. covered that in in my how to give fewer F's chapter in my book. Yeah, by the way, I'm just uh, I just ordered your book on Amazon. So, uh, love it. I actually was reading the, some of the reviews. They're just amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having my call. I appreciate it. All right, Eli. Thanks, man. See you later. Cool. Bye. Peace. All right. Um, guys in the waiting area in the private chat, let me know what it is that you want to talk about. Uh, Alex, if you're all set up, I'll, I'll pull you in next. And let me just grab these super chats here. Uh, channels book podcast. Okay. That was for women. We handled that. Fred, Fred O chicken. How do you spit game? You just become the game. Um, that's, that's what it boils down to. You, you just become game. That's it. Uh, Alex is going to add you back in. You got your audio working? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So what can I do for you, bro? Uh, my issue is that I have four plates that I spin and all of them are basically in love with me. Okay. But um, every one of them doesn't know that I am dating other girls, but they have the suspicion that I am. And one of them, one of the questions I have is, how do you, in the best way possible, uh, answer that question if she asks, "Do you sleep with other women?" Um, how long have you been dating them all? Uh, the longest is about. Uh, a year one of them and the others are uh, six months basically okay and and what are they asking you like are you sleeping with other women uh yeah they, they do it very indirectly they don't they don't ask you in you know in front they they wait for the perfect moment when they can look at you in the eyes and they ask if if you are mm -hmm. or if you are uh you know monog monogamous with them or not okay and what have you said uh, <laughs> I basically uh, try to divert or give them the most political, political, you know, like like a politician speaking, you know, the the most non-direct answer I can I can give. And okay, and yeah. Well, well, like, what's your plan? Like, are you planning to just try to spend them indefinitely? Like, you wanted to get serious with one and maybe be, maybe have like an open relationship on your end, or like, what are you thinking? Uh, I want to spin them because I'm not ready for a relationship right now, but I enjoy their time. I enjoy the mm -hmm. company and I, I, I am honest about that. 
but mm -hmm. uh, some of some of them like to pressure you know into an LTR. <clears throat> how old are you? Uh, I'm 25. And how old are these women? Uh, 23, 22. Okay, interesting. Um, your best bet is is j just to clearly state, um, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. And if I am, don't worry, I'll work on them. Your health won't be at risk. Simple mm -hmm. as that. And if she doesn't like that, she insists on monogamy. She insists on locking you down. Uh, you know, it frustrates her. Then just let her go. I mean, you got you got three other plates spinning. Mm. All, all all four of them will not bounce on you. I promise that. They're like probably out of four, you're probably going to find at least half, or maybe three quarters of them will probably stay. But what what would you do in in that? You know, plate spinning uh, situation because they they pressure you all the time into an LCR. But you know, I well, just, always I, just I be always honest and say I'm not looking for a a monogamous, exclusive, long term relationship right now. I like you. I enjoy your company. You know, and I'd like to carry on that way. Mm. I'm not saying that I won't be open to it in the future, but right now this is this is how I want to roll. I mean, I'm not 40 years old. I don't need to be thinking about you know, exclusivity or babies or anything like that right now. So let's go get something neat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing I try to pressure, you know, not pressure, but move the time on and, and, you know, postpone the, the, you know, the talk, but no, I would even, no, I would even put po like postpone. I mean, if you're six to 12 months into dating these women and they're asking you questions about, are you banging anybody else? Yeah. Maybe sometimes I do, but don't worry. I'm not going to put your health at risk and we're in a condom. That's it. <laughs> If she doesn't uh, like that, okay, then go home. I, I don't care. I got three other girls I can call. Like, whatever. Dude, you're in your 20s. You should not be in an exclusive, monogamous, long-term relationship with any chick in your 20s. I don't Spin plates, be but be on your purpose first. Hmm. True. You're, you're, you're putting thought into it, which is good, fine, but you're putting a little too much thought into... Well, how do I respond to it? How's that going to make them feel? You know, where do I go with this? If they pressure me, I don't know how to deal with the pressure. See, this is part of being a man, dude. Like you got to be able to just say, hey, you know, I totally dig your vibe and I definitely want to see you, you know, next Tuesday. You know, it's the end of your Tuesday night or something like that. I definitely want to see you next uh, Tuesday. Um, so wear that little black dress and I can't wait to see you again sort of thing. And if she starts pressuring and asking questions and who else you see, and it's like, whoa, 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 hold on a second here. Like I said, we're not married. You don't own me. I enjoy my time with you and that's it. Okay. If you want to carry on, you know, you know, and she, and she's in love with you is what you're saying, right? Like this is what you're getting from these women. Uh, I have some that directly say that they want to have my babies and they want to go and travel and see the world and shit like Good. that. Good. Because women would be more than happy to share a high value alpha. They'd rather do that than be straddled with a faithful loser. Right. But so if, so if these women, so this is your shit test to them. If these women are truly in your frame and are head over heels in love with you and are serious about having your babies later on the down the road, and that's something that you can say to them, say, look, you know, dig your vibe too, love you to bits, you know, I look forward to having you in my future, right? I don't know what that's going to look like right now. Maybe babies could be part of that equation. I don't know yet, right? But don't bust my chops on this. And you kind of move on from there. Okay, let's go get something to eat. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You don't have to think about it any more than that, dude. Yeah. You're the prize. You're on your purpose. You have shit to do, right? You're laying the foundation for the rest of your life right now. With well, four women, I mean, you're having fun with it. So awesome for you, right? Yeah, but it takes time. You know, it takes time from, from my, you know, other things that I do. So. So, so don't allocate that much time to these four women, right? Make sure that you've got enough time so that you're so that you're working on yourself. So you're putting that dent in the universe. So that you're building yourself up to that next version of whatever Alex, you know, is becoming. But one one last fu funny thing that I noticed is even though these women know, you know, not directly, but they know I'm not maybe monogamous, in some way it Dude, turns they them know. on. In, in chicks, some way, it, it they turns fucking them count on. your condoms. They do. They they see the hair on my They look for hairs. Yeah. They'll yeah. smell for perfume. 
it's crazy. Women are man. fucking crazy, man. Like they'll even try to like have have their girlfriends like hit on you and like a DM and see how I've you tried respond. That. I've tried Women do all kinds of weird shit to like test guys. Just fucking blow it all off, dude. It's just like I'm on my purpose. I got stuff to do. You know, if you want to hang around me while I'm doing this shit, awesome. Let's do this. Maybe maybe we'll have babies one day. I don't know, right? But you just kind of blow it off, right? You just have to not put that much effort and attention on it, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, appreciate it. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, again, in the private chat, if you guys are in the uh, waiting area, just leave me a, uh, a quick comment so I know what it is that you want to chop it up on. There's a join link again. And speak game. Pressing. Oh, hey, Richard, stop oppressing me with your heteronormative performance. <laughs> All right. Uh, JB Stupid It Rich. Uh, every woman I've dated was at least an eight happened spontaneously. Uh, it's when you don't chase tail. It's when you'll get the girl. That is why that is. I don't know. I can tell you why, because you're not. Women chase guys when you're on your purpose. All right. That's that's when it becomes easier for you. And too many guys spend way too much time on dumb shit out there in the Mano Swamp. Oh, let me let me figure out how to translate woman to like man. You don't need the next course on woman ease, dudes. It's like watch her behavior, stop listening to the stupid words. Stop getting so caught up in the emotion and behaving like a woman, listening to the words. Watch what she does. Watch what she does with her time. Watch how she behaves around you. Watch how she responds when you ask her to do something. Watch. That's all you need to know. And when you start watching women's behavior, you'll start to realize that they respond to top shelf men very, very easily. Become that top shelf man. You don't have to worry about it. As much anyway. Uh, let's see what else we got here. All right. Let's go to the private chat and see how we have... Simon, uh, I got Simon and Daniel B. Let's see what Daniel B's got. Anytime some of the other people. Okay, I got a man. I got a, a cheating question regarding men and women's perspective from Simon. Simon, you're up, buddy. Uh, hi, Rich. Yeah, so um, I just, yeah, on the question of cheating, um, I know what you meant when guys are to date monogamously especially in the 20s, um, before marriage, that is. Um, but my question just extends to uh, married people because, of okay, from what Rolo said in uh, Rational Male is that women want someone capable of cheating but not to cheat, essentially. But mm -hmm. then you've also got um, like people like Kevin Samuel saying uh, married men don't, I mean, high-valued men don't cheat, they exercise options. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to from like a moral standpoint to argue to agree with like men or women who do cheat uh you know I, I like even though i just come across the red pill ideology i still find it morally hard to maybe accept okay someone who does cheat once they get married of course i mean if okay dating, well have you have you read any evolutionary psychology no i haven't yeah. you'll understand why men and women cheat and you'll also understand why men and women cheat for different reasons like when women cheat they're they're basically done. There's only there's only one instance where women cheat and they stay with the guy and it's if it's beta bucks, like solid beta bucks, right? Like she'll okay. use him to pay for the house, the mortgage, the cottages, the vacation, the children, all that stuff while she'll go to pound town with Kevin from sales. Okay? That's mm -hmm. that's an example of cheating where they'll stay with the guy. But usually when women cheat in a long-term relationship, it's because she's done and and she's and she's monkey branching with that guy right like women like i think the number is something like more than 50% of women have a backup plan women surveyed in a long term relationship or a ma marriage admit 50% of them admit to having a backup plan so the other 50% are either not willing to admit that they have a backup plan or they don't have a backup plan but on a ba balance of probabilities women have backup plans lined up meaning that if they're going to cheat it's with a guy that they're basically monkey branching over to. When men cheat, it's just because they want strange. They just want some variety. That's it. 
Like we're men make millions of sperm every month. We're here to scatter our seed. There's no question about that. Women make one egg per month. That's it. Mm. So would that explain that, okay, uh, married women, even though they don't like the idea of that man cheating, even if he does cheat, they still wouldn't leave him? Because Dude, part of I've, the, I've, 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 I've spoken to probably hundreds of men now yeah. um, that have had multiple affairs, some cases, multiple mistresses, in some cases, a notch, like racked up a notch count well over a hundred during their marriage. And their wife just looked the other way. Mm. Watch um, watch the documentary on Netflix um, on The Crown. It's about the, uh, you know, it's Penalism, more or less yeah. about the royal family. And you yeah. start to catch wind that Prince Philip was pretty much uh, a Chad banging whoever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And the queen looked the other way. The most powerful woman in the world looked the other way. Mm. Yep. Right? Yeah. So thinking. when men and women do it, it's it okay, like... Men and women cheat. Yeah. Women cheat just as much as guys do, but they do it for different reasons. Mm. Today, women do it for evolutionary reasons, but they also do it a lot more now too because they're told to behave like men. Toxic mm. feminism just makes feminine women into terrible men. That's all that it does. Mm. But from a moral standpoint, would you say that once you get into it, I mean, once you obviously get into a marriage whether morally for both genders it would be F wrong facts or? don't care about feelings dude like mm -hmm. whenever guys go on about the moral standpoint of this that or the other thing the fact yeah. of the matter is is that human beings are not monogamous we're highly yeah. promiscuous primates that's what we are right yeah. so there's I think so we can do it from the context of let's say a child and mm -hmm. let's say the child's parents so one of the parents this enter into something like that whether it affects them, their viewpoint of that parent, not so much of uh, the viewpoint of a parent, but from the viewpoint of a child, that's where I'm looking at. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I don't know what age child you're talking about, but but children mm -hmm. aren't equipped to deal with uh, romantic relationships until they've become adults, right? So yeah. you shouldn't be exposing children to any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let them yeah. be kids. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you on the Fresh and Fit podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy watching them. I think you'll be good in dealing with the ladies there. Listen, don't don't sit on the sidelines watching the show go on all the time and and get into the red meat. There's a lot of fucking shows out there that are all about the red meat. Let's get eyeballs on us because, you know, we can expose these garden tools for what they are. And everybody just kind of sits there and throws money at it. And they're in the chat and they're like, oh, rah, rah, rah. Get on the ice and try to score a goal yourself, man. You know, chase excellence, you know, do something. I don't like it when I hear guys, you know, go on about how much time they spend sitting on the sidelines watching other people throw red meat around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm not going to go on the Fresh and Fit podcast. It ain't happening anytime soon, though. Yeah. All right, bro. Yeah, I'll thanks. see you later. Peace. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Got to catch up. Do, 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 do. There we are. Sam Whiskey. Men should say no often. Absolutely. Say no to your wife. Say no to your children. Uh, EC says the LTR question from them. They're on the clock and baggage. They want you to claim without opening it up. You got your stuff and objectives. Okay. Raging quail. Monkey branching can be a blessing in disguise. The faster they remarry, the less likely they'll seek alimony. Yep. But if you make more money than the guy that she's monkey branching over to. So if you're beta bucks and you make a million dollars a year and the guy that she's monkey branching over to makes, I don't know, $50,000, $70,000 a year, guess what? She ain't going to marry him because she knows that you're the, you're the ATM, dude. Jesse, in reference to that recent caller with a couple of chicks in love with him, is it out of line for a man to want women to be exclusive with him, but the man not be exclusive with the women? Uh, it's completely normal. That's basically what you're talking about there is harem. 
And uh, there's a very good book by Dr. Hector Garcia. It's called Alpha God. And he talks throughout the entire book about uh, mostly men throughout history that have had harems of women, um, meaning he had n a number, not even, you know, a few, but like hundreds, in some case, more than a thousand women that were sexually exclusive to him as part of his harem and bore him, you know, a lot of children. Uh, the most recent example is, um, what's his name? Ish Ishmael the Bloodthirsty. I think he was a Moroccan sultan from about the last two or 300 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 17th or 18th century. And I think he holds the world record for the most number of children you know, aside from Genghis Khan, who went around and pillaged and plundered and, and just knocked up everything, but like running harem game um, accounted for, I think there was close to a thousand children. It was either just under or just over a thousand children. The numbers were not completely accurate. I think the lowest number was like 980 and the highest number was like 1100. Uh, he had so many children that couldn't count them all, but he basically had like a few dozen wives and then he had all these concubines. And when they would reach a certain age, like 30, for example, they would get basically retired and put out to pasture and they were there to look after the children that they bore and newer, younger, more fertile women would come in. And he did this his entire life. I think his last child was born something like um, seven or eight months after he died. So he was still basically banging up to his death. Um, you can go look it up. It's a very interesting story, but check out um, Alpha God by Hector Garcia. It's a great book. All right, let's see what we got here in the private chat. Maddie has a question regarding my book. So let's give him the screen. What's up, Maddie? Hi, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. What's up, brother? Okay, I'm fine. Thank you. I thank think you. I've had you on before, right? You're an Egyptian? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm the Egyptian guy. How you doing? Got it, got it. Okay, so what's your question about the book? Okay, yeah, in the your ch chapter two, Women's Rules, How They Break Them or Make Them, okay? Yes. Uh, regarding the, you mentioned the story with the girl who had a like an a, a, an eight date rule. She yeah, the Amazonian. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. the Amazonian. Okay. Uh, about negotiating desire. If a girl negotiates something that is less than that, even going out with you, is that is that that's a that's a red flag, right? I'm not sure I understand your question. Can you clarify okay. for me? Okay, uh, she said, I won't have sex with you unless we go out about eight, eight times, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. She even neg negotiates the, uh, things that are less than sex. Um, maybe, what, going out together. She doesn't even want to go out with you. Mm -hmm. That's that's a well, red flag? Yeah, because you, because you should be leading that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Women don't want to lead the relationship. They want you to tell, tell them where you're going to take them to eat. But what if I told them and they refused? Maybe then, that's 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 my problem or hers. I mean, then maybe if you I'm really not... want to, then just replace her with another woman. Spin plates. That's what spinning plates is, basically. Okay. But I mean, like, in what context are we talking about here? Like, you ask her to do something and she refuses. Can you explain that to me? Uh, like uh, a special task at work. Uh, the, the, Translate this file for me. Uh, write this word. With okay, hang on a sec. Are we talking about coworkers here? Or are we talking about girls you're dating? Mm, a little bit of both. Or are we talking so, both? So you're both, so you're yeah. dipping the pen in the company ink. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We've all done it, bro. You're not the first one. You're not going to be the last one. You put men and women in a workspace in close close proximity. Banging will ensue. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so. So she's asking you to do something that's work related. So it's got nothing to do with the romance part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's work related. I mean, you know, if she's if she's refusing to do something, especially if she trumps you, you know, if she's a superior, if she's in a like if she's in charge of a certain part of the project. No, no, she's a coworker, just like my, just like me. Okay, and she's asking you to what? Photocopy uh, something, and you're saying no, or you're asking her to do something? Yes, I'm asking her to do something. I, I saw an IOI. She. Okay. Looks at me and smiles, and we have a we have this we have this vibe, mm -hmm. having conversations and whatnot. So I ask her out, and she refuses. And why does she refuse? Uh, because of the social norms, uh, you refuse because because what will what will they say? This is not acceptable. Okay, fine, whatever. So just so just ask out her friend then. Her friend. <laughs> yeah, 
the you know the next girl that sits in the next cubicle or the next girl in the next apartment like who cares right mm -hmm. i mean you're not looking to get married here i mean you're looking to have some experience and spin some plates if i understand you cor correctly so Exa exactly exactly so a chick says no then you move on mm -hmm. so uh, take the uh, take sorry take the l and move on take the hit man and just move on <laughs> okay <laughs> Thanks Next, lot, there's plenty of women in there. There's plenty of fish in the sea, right? <laughs> yes. All right. I'll see you later, man. Thank you, man. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, private chat. Tope. Are you still in here? Okay. Tope's in here. How do you raise him? Uh, okay. Uh, mentioned. Uh, Tope, I gotta be honest with you. I don't want to throw that question on because YouTube is so sensitive on topics like that and it might cause a problem. So, uh, I'm going to skip over yours, Adam Pinkman. If you want to like sponsor a, a private video for me to answer that one for you specifically, um, you know, I'm happy to do that. I'll, I'll take the time to do that, but I don't want to do that one publicly. Uh, Daniel. Daniel's got a question on leaving people. All right, Daniel, you're up, buddy. Hey, Rich, thanks for having me on. Yeah, what's shaking? Well, not much right now, but I did read your book, and this is one of the biggest questions I have from it because okay. we, you speak about, you know, if something's not working out or if you reach a certain level and you won't, you have to increase your own value, you got to make friends. It's kind of like you say, if five of your friends are losers, you'll be the sixth one. Mm-hmm. So my question is, how do you let those people go, especially if they haven't really crossed any boundaries or anything? They're just kind of not as um, on fire as you are to succeed. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty simple, right? I mean, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you get out of that room. So the guys that you've surrounded yourself with that aren't um, – people that you want to be around, you just leave that room. You know, you don't hang out with them. You don't go to the social events when they text you, you're busy. Um, I mean, if you want to be clear about it and say, Hey, look guys, you know, like I'm, I'm really busy working on this project. It's really important to me that I get this business off the ground. I don't have time to sit around and drink beers in Bob's garage on Wednesday night anymore. Um, I'll be insert whatever on that night. So I'll catch so just up with you. A simple push away. Now, when it comes to women, in my part, maybe if I like share what happened to me. So I had three girls I was with at the same time. Okay. And one of them, I just kind of set aside. Mm -hmm. But then here I am working on a Saturday and she shows up to my house. You have another conversation, send her away, send her her away. Don't answer calls. Don't answer nothing. Two weeks go by. Here she is at your house again. How mm -hmm. do you handle that situation? She just So she's basically obsessed with you. Yeah. She like, my friends tell me, oh, she's a stalker, you know, which is well, not too far from the tree, but I don't want to. Okay. So if she poses a danger, then you should contact the police. Yeah, but she doesn't. Well, it's you don't, more of you don't know what she's done, but I mean, if she's basically like showing up at your property, she's not getting the hint that it's so like, I mean, I mean, the thing you got to understand about women is they hate being dumped, right? Like, there's, there's always a levy and a leave or in the equation and women hate being the person that gets left. When you dump a woman, they want to have endless meetings with you. They'll continuously text you. They want to send emails. They want to get clarity. If you go and try to do the same thing as a guy, then you're fucking branded as a, uh, a simp or a stalker, right? And they'll go and file a restraining order on you. So just, just drop the hammer and say, look, we're done. The time between us is finished right now, so you just need to move on. And if you carry on harassing me, showing up at work, coming come to my house, I'm going to have to file a restraining order. So, you know, it's as simple as that. And if she does it again, then you file it. So just straight down. Yeah, dude. Like hammer it down. Yeah, like you can't have time for these like obsessive like women that 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 like they're the ones that will show up at your house at four o'clock in the morning and like drug you and cut off your body parts like they do weird shit dude like you you don't know what you're dealing with here mm -hmm. okay well so, i appreciate the advice in case it escalates to a point of it becoming a problem i would i would state your intent clearly and if it has to be done in in uh written format like via text 
Um, at least you got evidence that you can show the police. And then if it carries on, then you file that order with the police. But uh, aside from that, it should just be like, hey, go away. We're done. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, no, thank you. Yeah. Enjoy your life. Done. Hey, Dan, can I see you on Thursday night? I'm busy Thursday night for the rest of my life. Go away. Yeah. Awesome. Well, All right, man. That, thank you. And thanks for writing an awesome book. You got it, man. And hey, if you haven't had a chance to leave a review on Amazon, I totally appreciate hearing what your views are. I read all those reviews. Thanks, man. Awesome. Bye. It can be like that Rocky Four, no pain, no gain. Yep. Rocky. Adrian. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, we've got Adam Pinkman. Where's your question? Let's see what I got here from Adam. And Jose, you can drop a little quick note. Oh, I dropped that in the wrong chat. Jose, you can drop a quick note in the private chat. Let me know what it is that you want to talk about. And yeah, guys, the show's live. If you have a question or something you want to challenge me on, just click that link. Come on in. Let's see what you're all about what I can do to be useful for you. If you have a better solution than I do, let's, let's chop it up. All right. Go back to my private chat here. All right. So Adam's got a question about family and sex. Adam, you're muted right now, by the way, you're going to have to unmute yourself uh, or not. Okay. You're out. Guys, if you come in the green room in the waiting area, you're coming on to ask a question live. So be ready when I pull you in. Hook, I'm going to pull you in next. What's up, buddy? Hey, Rich. How's it going? Good, man. What can I do for hey. you tonight? I uh, wasn't even ready for a question yet, but um, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. So I've been dating a girl for about a year and a half, um, long-term relationship. Yeah. She's got two kids. I'm 56. She's 47. Um, I consider myself a top 20%. You know, I'm making close to 250 a year. Uh, I got my shit together. I have two kids of my own, but they're grown. And um, I'm having an issue trying to get things hmm, either back on track or just how to cut away cleanly without having a, too many hurt feelings. Because she hasn't done anything wrong. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that she's done that's, you know, um, caused an issue. It's just that my lack of interest in her now and her lack of interest in sex has caused a lot of this too, because it's primarily one of the things that dwindled over the last six months. So I'm Are you asking me how to break up with this girl? No, not how to break up. It's just, um, am I am I thinking that I shouldn't, or is this just the way it is? Or, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just... Well, you're obviously thinking. not happy in this relationship, right? Yeah, no, I'm not. I mean, I, I enjoy her company. She's fun to hang out with. Um, but there's just other things. I think I'm not ready to move into a house together. I'm sure she's talking about it. Um, she's asked me before, you know. Well, sex is the glue that holds relationships together, according to Rolo, right? right? So if you're not even banging at this stage, it's not like that's mm-hmm. going to get any better if you guys live to the, you know, together. It's always going to go on the decline. Yeah. yeah. And she's and, older than you, too? You said she's in her 50s? No, I'm 56. She's 47. She's not. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. And my drive is up there. I'm on TRT. So my drive is up there and she thinks, you know, every time we get together on the weekends or, you know, twice during the week, um, mm-hmm. it's too much, right? Every time we get together, it's too much to have sex, has, sex, which is once or twice a week. Have you sent her over to your endocrinologist or over to your clinic to see if she needs to get her hormones balanced? Matter of fact, she went on her own and had everything tested. And um, her doctor said that that's pretty much normal for a 47 year old woman is the decrease in her sex drive. And my thing is that I don't think that it's a decrease per se, in, in my opinion, with her specifically, I think it's maybe she's just not seeing me as her sexual best, but she's not ready to leave me either. She's pushing for more of a, a stronger relationship. Well, that might be a part of it too, but I mean, she didn't get any treatment. Like if she hit menopause? Uh, no, she's no, she's pre-menopausal. Okay. Well, hmm. I mean, you'd have to take a look at the blood labs and see what's going on there, but that's, yep. that's unusual, but like either way, dude, like it's not working out. So why, so why marinate on mm-hmm. it that, that much? You know what I'm saying? Like just, if it's not serving you, you're not happy in it. You don't see it going anywhere on a long-term basis. You're, you're not even being sexually satisfied, which is like the mm-hmm. biggest part of a relationship, right? 
then just move on, right? Just let her know that you're, you know, it's time to wrap it up. The relationship has run its course. Yep. Wish her well. And, you know, just say, hey, you know, things can still be friendly. We're just, you know, not ready to move into the next phase of this relationship and don't want to really hold you up or hold you back. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the things can still be friendly, um, you know, conversation. It's like, you know, when I'm done with a chick, I'm done. I don't, I don't ever want to see her again if I'm done with her. Gotcha. All right. But, you know, it's everybody likes to have their own protocols with that, right? Yeah. That's the toughest part, letting go of something that, you know, she's not met bad or mean or, you know, disrespectful. It's just that, man, yeah, I'm just done with her. And I can't tell her that without you know, crushing her heart. Or <laughs> yeah. Well, I always tell guys like, you know, women aren't permanent fixtures in your life. Right. I mean, they're going to come and go, you know, some, I mean, there's the odd occasion where, you know, a man and woman loses their virginity to each other and they stay, stay married for their entire life. And they, you know, they die in bed side by side, holding hands, singing Kumbaya at 91 sort of thing. But that's, that's like very, 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 very rare. Men, men and women have multiple partners. It is what it is. It was just your turn. If mm-hmm. it's not working out, you move on. Yep, gotcha. All right, man. All right, great chatting with you. I love the books. I bought two, one for me and one for a buddy. Nice. Appreciate it. Thanks, Hook. No All right, take it easy. Cheers. Um, let's see what we got here. Akis. Rich, please answer honestly. Has a woman ever made you want to sing or cry happy tears? I don't know if happy tears is a song or if made me want to sing or cry um definitely cried i've i've definitely shed tears over women uh sing i don't know that i've sung a song (laughs) i like to belt out my tunes when i'm driving so sure i've sung i've sung a song while there's a woman in the car how's that uh okay 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 let's go to the private chat again guys if you have a uh a question what time is it Oh, we got a little more time still. If you got a question, probably have time for a couple more. Uh, hop into the show and in the green room in the private chat. Just let me know what your question is. Okay. Uh, Adam, Jose. Did we get Jose? Okay, here we go. This is a question about finding purpose. All right. So how old are you, Jose? I'm 18 years old. Okay. Don't worry about it too much. (laughs) You're only 18, man. I mean, if you were like 40 years old and going on about finding your purpose, we could have a conversation about that. But at 18, do fun shit, explore, go and walk about, don't knock up any chicks, don't get an STD, lift weights, you know, don't get fat. Like those are the main things. Like I wouldn't worry about, you know, how do I find my purpose? Just keep doing shit until something mm-hmm. slams you in the forehead, like a frying pan to the forehead moment. You're like, whoa, I think I really like this and I should be doing more of it, right? Yeah. So just do things. Like I always tell guys like, you know, in the absence of clarity, move. So just do things. You know, at 18, it's a good question to contemplate, but I think that you're a little bit ahead of yourself right now. Oh. All right? Yes. Also, All right, I, love your book. I read it and it's just something I was saying. I have recommended it to a lot of people right now. Where do you live, by the way? In what country? Um, I live in New York City, actually. Okay, cool, United cool. States. Good. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And hey, listen, do me a solid. Leave a quick review on Amazon. It helps me out a ton. Yes. Thanks, bud. Thank See you. ya. All right. Uh, okay, guys, in the private chat. So I'm just going to remove a few of you. Uh, remove and... Oh, looks like we're almost done here. Almost done. Cappy tears. Little little Cosette says, when you move on from a girl, it isn't teaching a loss. It is more like just brushing off a pitch. Kiss. Richard, again, has a woman ever made you cry happy again? Happy tears. I was specific and your answer was vague. Cry happy tears? Um... Yeah, sure. I mean, I, uh, I think when the uh, slideshow was going off at uh, my wedding reception, I was, you know, I was all like, mm, you know, because that's how dudes get, man. <laughs> we still, we still have that little part of us, you know, that hopeless romantic from all the Disney movies that we watched as a kid. Of course, all guys are going to go there at some point. I'm sure. 
All right. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, John. John, what is up? What are you? Long time, long time. Uh, been watching your shows. Really appreciate the work you've done. Okay. What um, I was going to say, I've been, I was looking at your uh, groups for your individual group there, and uh, it's way out of my budget, unfortunately. I was going to suggest that uh, maybe you look at creating a second group for uh, guys like me who aren't really making more than six figures, if you know what I mean. What are you, um, what are you looking for specifically? What are you trying to get out of the group? I'm looking for basically the same. I was looking for the same thing you've already got set up. A group of looking for a tribe of like minded like minded men who want to better mm -hmm. themselves and stuff like that, but just on a smaller scale of uh, you know we have less resources. Maybe we're not you know CEOs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so that's you know why I, mean. I do the show uh, for free, right? I mean that's why I take the call in so I can so I can talk to anybody you know without a paywall in front of it. Uh, the thing with my private communities is I work with seven and eight figure professionals. Um, you know, I come from Entrepreneurs Org and running several businesses myself. So I've dealt with a lot of top tier guys. So I keep the community exclusive in that sense. So it'll give you incentive to chase excellence, put a dent in the universe, work up to that level. But if you got anything going on in your world, you know, that you want to chop up and do live, just, you know, hop on it before the train wreck. It's, it's free and open to everybody. It's just, that's just the way that I like to run my uh, private community, Brett. I, I, you know, completely respect that. You know, we all got to make bank, we all got to make cheddar. So. Uh, well, yeah, what it it's, is in this world. it's it's a it's a price of admission and you can buy your way into a better room a lot of guys go like oh, you know how do i get into a, a better room you know i'm the smartest guy in the room well you can buy yourself a seat in a better room that's that's essentially what that community is built around um exactly. that's just the way that it works man but anyway thanks for hopping on john no problem take it easy buddy thanks man take care all right Let's see here. Okay, let's get these last few supers and then we will wrap up. Uh, tips on managing a routine for success. Um, I would recommend reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, good book. Easy, quick read, not difficult. Definitely check it out. Uh, Rich, I had a chick I used to work with friend requested me after 10 years for context, things plateaued briefly in the past, then ghosted split between it's the manual, oh, sorry, the mutual friend algorithm, or she's regained interest in me. Uh, there shouldn't be any question if she has interest in you, it should be obvious. Um, women aren't ambiguous about their interest in a man. When she's interested in a man, you will know it. <laughs> okay. She will, she will drive over to your house at four o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday night and do all kinds of crazy stuff that she wouldn't do with the other guy with you. Um, it is, it is like genuine burning desire is a concept that I think guys need to get to. And again, I'm going to do a final pitch on the book before I go, but I have a chapter on that very topic. The Unplugged Alpha, it's on Amazon. Get it as a Kindle, print, or Audible. I narrated it myself. Genuine burning desire matters because you will have one, a better experience as a guy, and two, it will be easier for you with women, right? It, it's it's going to help you distinguish between burning desire, indifferent, and you're on fire and she's got a glass of water in her hand and she'll just walk away drinking it. She doesn't care about you, right? So you want to get some clarity around that. I would uh, I would definitely check out the book to get some clarity on genuine burning desire i did a video actually on my channel in 2016 i think about a year before i announced reading the rational mail and i was essentially talking about what genuine burning desire is and how to gauge it with women uh, i was driving my old m3 convertible that's how old that video is so it's one of the first ones on the channel uh, i think it was like the summertime of 2016 or just search for um actually here i'll I'll dig it up and I'll give it to you. I will save you the time, brother. I will save you the time. Um, to talk of a girl who likes you, I can get the title. Get it for you. I'll get it for you. There it is. Four years ago. Copy. Boom. I'll just drop it in the live chat. So if you guys are watching a replay, the title of the video is how to know if a girl likes you the truth. But that's uh, that's how you break it down. It's actually one of my earliest videos talking about these topics. 
without the beard. Oh, uh, one last thing. If you guys can do uh, me a solid. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But there's a community tab which works really well on desktop and mobile uh, for the channel. It, it should show up in your feed if you're watching these videos. But I'm just going to post this over here. If you can head over to the community tab, just give me an idea for next week's uh, before the train wreck. And um, follow the instructions there once you check that out. And that's it. Let me make sure I got all the supers there. We're good. And a uh, quick shout out to the channel sponsor. Before I go, boom, boom, boom. you go to coopersoap.com or if you're watching the replay, I'll have it pinned in the top comment. Three things this stuff does. One, it's handmade, all organic. Okay, there's no endocrine disruptors in there that are going to elevate your estrogen levels or disrupt your ability to produce testosterone. I did a playing to win uh, collab with Dr. Anthony J on his book called Estro Generation. Um, it was about a year ago, but just search on my channel for playing to win Dr. Anthony J read his book. Even I got it linked to my Amazon bookstore and he talks about how toiletries are one of the biggest endocrine disruptors. There's certain ingredients they put in them, which are very cheap and very easy to manufacture. You can buy a big box of shit of soaps at Costco's, your big box stores for way less than you can pay for this. But there's a reason why you pay more for it. It doesn't have any of that crap in it. So it won't disrupt your endocrine system. And the second thing too, it's got pheromones, get a little bit of a boost on the sexual marketplace. So check that out at coopersoap.com. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay, that's it. We're good. I got it caught up in everything. We'll see you guys next week. Take that survey. Let me know uh, what your topic suggestion is for next week. Again, men and women are not the same. Leave a little comment below. Hit the like button. And if there's somebody that needs to see this cast, uh, share it with them. I'd appreciate that. See you guys.